Great, an empty node. That's just what we wanted. Of course, that's not what we wanted at all. But it is our base to start throwing in our data. Thankfully, it's not very hard to make our node look like our final result, because the node class has some specific containers that allow us to place our data in certain places. Because of that, I think it's a good idea to explain how those containers are laid out and what should we be using them for. Every container the node has is placed within another container named main container. A reason for you to add something to this container is when you want something to be at the same level as the other containers. For example, in our final result, I've used this container to add our Hat Choice button to the Multiple Choice node. At the top of all the other containers within the main container, we have the title container. It comes with a title label at its left side, that we can edit through its title variable. This container is for anything related with the title of the node. As an example, we'll be using this to hold our dialog name in a text field, allowing us to update it as we see fit. Inside of the title container, we have yet another container named title button container. This container is placed at the right side of the title container, unless we place our own elements at an index that's higher than that container. It comes with a collapsible arrow icon by default, and is useful to add any general button that we want the node to have. Something else to note is that when the node is collapsed, the whole title container will still be showing. So only place things here if you don't mind them being shown when the node is collapsed. That's also one of the reasons why I didn't add my hat choice button here, as I did not want it to show when the node was collapsed and it will make it harder to drag the node around. Under the title container, contrary to its name, we have the top container. This container is where the input container and the output container are placed. Any element placed here will be placed in an horizontal direction, and we should place something here in case we want it to be in the same level as the input and output containers. The input container is the container that's shown on the left side of the node. It is useful for us to place our input parts. In our case, we'll use it for the dialog connection port so that other nodes can connect to this one. The output container is shown at the right side of the node, and it's useful to add our output ports. We'll be using it to add our choices. Under all of these containers, we have the extension container. This should be used when you want to add custom data that doesn't belong to the other containers, and you want to show them at the end of the node. We'll be using this one to add our dialog text, but you could easily add more data if you'd want, like an audio file or the image of who is talking. There is one slight difference between this container and the other containers, and that's that when you add data to this one, you'll need to call the refresh expanded state method to update its contents. Otherwise, the container won't show anything. Other than that, there is a typical content container, available in all visual elements. But I'm not entirely sure if we should be using that one here, as whenever I add something into it, it shows up outside of the node. It seems to hold whatever elements take care of the node border, but we are not really going to need it for anything. And that's the structure of the node class. Now that we have a basic idea of the node structure, we can start adding our base UI. We'll start by creating a method we shall call draw, so that we can call it whenever we want. In here we'll be adding the following common UI. The dialog name text field, the input port, and the dialog text text field, which is inside something called a foldout. So let's type in text field, and we are going to need to import its namespace. And then I'll name it dialog name text field equals to a new text field. Text fields have a label if you want the text before them, but I want to set its value, so to update the text that's inside, I'll use the object initializer to set its value to be equal to dialog name. We can now insert this text field into the title container. To make sure it doesn't go to the last index, making it show after the title button container, we are going to use the insert method and pass in an index of 0, making it go to the left instead.
For the input port, we are going to create a port by using the node class instantiate port method. So type in port, and I'll name it input port, equals an instantiate port. We have a few parameters to pass in for this method. The first parameter is the orientation, which can be either horizontal or vertical. Horizontal will make the port connection line or edge flow from the left to the right, while vertical will make it flow up or down. In our case, we'll use the horizontal direction in all of the ports. As a second parameter, we have the direction, which can be input or output. This simply tells if a port will be an input port or an output port. We'll be using input port for this one, so that another node can get connected to this one. Then we have the capacity parameter, which can be single or multi. Single means this port can only be connected to one other port, while multi means this port can be connected to how many ports we want. Because we can leave any dialog to this one, the input port will have a capacity of multiple. The last parameter is the type of the port. To be completely honest, I have no idea what this is used for. I couldn't get it from what was on GitHub, but I've just typed in type of pool and it worked for me until now. If you don't know what it's used for, feel free to leave a comment down below. Something else we need to do for the port is to give it a name. We can do that by using its port name property and give it a value we want. If you don't type anything here, it will use the type we've sent above as a string. I'll give it the value of dialog connection. When that's done, we simply add it to the input container. Lastly, we are going to update our extension container by adding the dialog text to it. We'll be adding this one to a foldout, so let's create one on top named text foldout, and this doesn't really accept any parameter, so we'll have to initialize it with the text that we want, to which I'll pass in dialog text. The foldout also accepts a value which basically tells whether it shows star collapses or not, but we'll leave it with the default value, which makes it start opened. Let's create our text field, which I'll name text, text field, and create one with the value of text. To add our text field to this foldout, we simply type in text foldout dot add and pass in our text field. To make some styling later on, I'll be adding the custom data in a visual element which we we'll lacked as a container. So let's create a visual element which I'll name custom data container. And pass in our foldout to be inside it with the add method. Then we simply make this new container part of the extension container. We now have our base UI made, but to show it off we need to call our draw method somewhere, and we'll be doing that in our graph view create node method. So let's go back to our graph view and call in node.draw. Here we need to remember to call in the initialize method before drawing as well, otherwise our node won't have any data, and our elements will be empty. Saving up and going back to Unity, we shall now see our node updated. However, it doesn't have our dialog text. If you remember our node structure explanation, that's because we haven't called the refresh expand state method. So let's go back to our node script and do that at the bottom of our draw method. If we save, we shall now be able to see our extension container custom data.